um, which sounds like a lot of work, but we have a tool called Bosch, um, which essentially automates this process. Um, and what Bosch does is you take this thing called a deployment manifest, uh, which lays out like the VMs you want, the software that's on those VMs, and whatever configuration. Uh, and you call Bosch deploy, and it spits out a Cloud Foundry at the end. Um, so that's cool, but uh, the two like hiccups that people usually hit is uh, one: how do you even uh, create a, a Bosch? Uh, which is essentially like this very simplified diagram. Um, essentially, you need a network uh, to house all your, your VMs and your Bosch, um, usually split up into two subnets, um, a public one, which you could put your Bosch into, um, and then uh, an internal subnet that uh, you put your Cloud Foundry into um, and Bosch deploys VMs into. Um, and then usually, you know, you want to route uh, internet, you know, internet access to your apps, so you'll create a load balancer, and then usually once you deploy Cloud Foundry, you'll attach your router to your load balancer, um, so that any traffic from the internet goes into your load balancer, to your router, and then to your apps. Cool. And then, like, if you figure out how to actually create this like infrastructure, um, usually you have to do some YAML marshaling with the deployment manifest to uh, get all that like IS specific information in. Um, usually this can include uh, things like your, your network uh, IDs and subnet IDs, uh, security groups, uh, VM types, disk types, things of that nature. Uh, and if you're kind of wondering like, what does this manifest kind of look like? This is just a small piece. Um, essentially, uh, there's like a job, which is a, a VM. Um, and then some templates, which is the, the software, uh, and then a bunch of properties uh, to configure that software. Yeah, so as you can see, Cloud Foundry is really complex, and deploying Cloud Foundry can be just as complex. Um, so what we're really focusing here on is simplifying how you deploy Cloud Foundry. So we want to make it as easy as possible for a user to get up and running with a Cloud Foundry installation. Um, so we want to abstract away a lot of this like configuration and deployment of infrastructure and really make it a streamlined process that's automatable, um, reproducible, something that's easy for an operator to use and understand. Um, and so, as we mentioned, um, the past year, core development teams at Cloud Foundry have been working on simplifying a setup for CF by the creation of three new sets of tools. The first new set of first new tool called Bosch Bootloader, which we'll refer to as Bubble. Um, Bubble is a tool that will take you from essentially nothing and will give you both a Bosch director and infrastructure for your Cloud Foundry installation. Um, Bosch Bootloader will use um, Bosch 2.0 um, under the hood, which is what we refer to as a set of new features in Bosch that really help improve the user experience. And lastly, the third tool is CF Deployment, which also uses Bosch 2.0, um, which is a repository that houses the base manifest that you use with Bosch to deploy Cloud Foundry itself. Uh, and so the key with these three tools here is that while each of them is powerful in solving a different problem in deploying Cloud Foundry, um, the main benefit is their compatibility with one another. So, while each of these tools, for example, Bubble focuses on the problem of creating a Bosch director um, and Cloud Foundry infrastructure. Um, while it's focused on that, its end goal isn't just to create a Bosch director. Its end goal is to create a Bosch director that you can then use to deploy your Cloud Foundry. And so compatibility is really highly emphasized among these three tools. Um, and one way this manifests is that we have pipelines that will use Bubble in conjunction with CF deployment so that any breaking changes to Bubble that would make it incompatible with CF deployment are caught early on to make sure that for users, the two are always in sync with one another and you have a positive operating experience. Um, so with these three tools, you can go from nothing to a Cloud Foundry in really a matter of a couple hours. 
All right, so you know us CF devs love concourse. Um, so I thought I'd walk through a concourse pipeline uh, to kind of show you how we deploy Cloud Foundry. Um, so there's three boxes on the, this board. Um, bubble up, deploy CF, and uh, deploy app. Um, so I'll start with the bubble up box. Cool, so as Angela mentioned, um, bubble will create the Cloud Foundry Cloud Foundry infrastructure for you. Um, so this is like you know the network, subnets, firewall rules, um, sets all that up so you don't have to think about it. And it'll also create you that Bosch director um, so that you could, um, you're just like ready to deploy Cloud Foundry. Um, so essentially going back to that uh, previous diagram, um, doing a bubble up will give you this. And um, another nice feature of Bubble is that uh, it's easy to update. So you could continuously run the bubble up command. And if you pull down like a new version of Bosch bootloader, run bubble up, it will upgrade your infrastructure to whatever the latest bubble is using and whatever Bosch director uh, is current at the time. And we also support AWS and GCP. Um, and the nice thing is that the Directors are deployed in such a way that um, switching between AWS and GCP is uh, pretty easy. Yeah. Um, does Cloud Foundry itself have support for more uh, passes than that? Yeah, so the question was uh, Does Cloud Foundry support more uh, IaaS than just uh, AWS and GCP? Uh, and the answer is yes. Um, I think. Uh, Bosch itself supports um, most of the major ones, so Azure, GCP, AWS, OpenStack, uh, and like vSphere and bare metal. Um, right now, Bubble only supports AWS and GCP, uh, but we're increasing uh, our IaaS support. Cool. Um, so another thing I wanted to touch on is uh, once you know you have your Bosch director, uh, Bubble also makes it easy to target that Bosch director, so you're like ready to do that Bosch deploy. Um, a common helper that we have is called bubble print env, which will essentially print out your environment variables that you need for your Bosch director. Uh, and then you could like eval that or source it. Um, and once you've done that, you could just uh, like do a Bosch deploy and you're ready to go. Um, and the last thing that bubble gives you is something called a cloud config. Uh, so this is kind of like the glue that will um, like allow you to deploy a Cloud Foundry into your bubble environment. Um, so if you remember back from when I was talking about the deployment manifest, uh, there's like a lot of IS specific information in there, um, like VM types, disk types, network information, etc. cetera. Um, all that gets moved into this Cloud Config, uh, so you don't have to think about it. And CF deployment uh, is mostly static. Uh, so you could just do a Bosch deploy into a bubble environment, and it'll just work. Uh, which brings up this point, uh, that it's well integrated with CF deployment. And if you're kind of wondering, like, what do these commands look like? Uh, it's essentially bubble up, which will give you that um, underlying infrastructure and your Bosch director, and then bubble create LBs will give you that uh, extra specific uh, load balancer uh, that you could hook up your, your router to. Awesome. So now we've gone through the task of bubbling up, and we have a Bosch director and CF infrastructure that we can use to deploy Cloud Foundry using CF deployment. So as I mentioned previously, CF deployment is a repository that houses the base manifest for your um, Cloud Foundry installation. Now, some of the benefits of CF deployment is that it really emphasizes human readability. So the repository is not only structured in such a way that makes it easy for a user to navigate, um, but it also um, makes it such that we have things like a static main manifest um, and breaks up components to make it easy and understandable for a user to follow. Um, Another major benefit of CF deployment is that it uses Diego as your container runtime system by default. Um, so for those of you who have deployed CF the old way with CF release, um, you'll be, it'll be familiar to hear that it takes two deployments to deploy Cloud Foundry with Diego. 
So one deployment for your Cloud Foundry installation and one to deploy Diego on top of it. Um, and this, of course, means that there is more manual, um, I guess, steps than in the case of CF deployment, in which you only have to deploy once to have a Cloud Foundry with Diego. And lastly, for all of the components in Cloud Foundry that use Mutual TLS, it turns Mutual TLS on by default. So it makes it that the base case for a Cloud Foundry installation is one that's more secure. Now, you might be wondering on the first point of human readability, how does CF deployment really optimize to make it easier for a user to understand? Um, so CF deployment takes a lot of the new features in Bosch 2.0 and uses them to make it easier for a person to understand and operate. So as I mentioned, um, CF deployment has a static main manifest. And the reason it's able to have a static main manifest is due to the cloud config, which Christian just talked about, and also two other Bosch 2.0 features, ops files and var stores. So an ops file is a separate YAML file that stores um, specific configuration information that you might want to apply to your main manifest. So let's say you actually want to increase the number of cells in your deployment. Um, you can have an ops file that looks something like this, which gives a path to where that value is stored in the main manifest, and you can give the override value. So let's say in this case, I want to bump it up to five. You can then apply this ops file to the main manifest, which has a base value of two, and the result will be that it will find and replace that value. The great thing about ops files in this case is that we can see that it allows for um, compartmentalization of different things that you might want to configure. So you might have one ops file called instance count overrides, which simply have all the operations you want to perform to change the value of different um, instance groups. Or you might have an ops file for AWS or GCP if you want to switch out the IaaS you're using under the hood. Um, and this way, as a user, you're able to quickly identify what ops files you might want for a specific Cloud Foundry configuration. Um, the second thing that makes CF deployment a lot more um, understandable for the human is a var store. Um, so the var store is one file that houses all of the variables that you use in your Cloud Foundry installation. So um, in your manifest, you might have something that looks like this, which is setting up the information for a database. And as we can see here, the DB password is some unknown password. Now in the past, you might have had to actually inline the password or store it elsewhere and use some other tool to put it into your manifest. But now with the var store, um, you're able to simply supply the path um, using the var store flag and, it, and Bosch will take care of actually utilizing that password for you. Another great benefit is that um, Bosch will actually, if you don't have that password in your VAR store, generate it for you. Um, so say I didn't have this, then after running a Bosch deploy, I'd actually see this new entry appear in my VAR store for this password. Um, and this is really great because as you can imagine, there's lots of different components, a lot of different features, a lot of different passwords that you as a user might have to manually generate um, if it wasn't for this feature. Um, so that's also really emphasizing um, improving the user experience for deploying CF. So using these features to get a Cloud Foundry, you can just run a Bosch deploy with your base manifest and then any additional ops files in your VAR store, and you'll have a Cloud Foundry that's ready for use to deploy apps to. Cool. Um, and then. I also wanted to bring up that Bubble also supports Concourse. Um, so you could run the same bubble up command, create all that underlying infrastructure, and then create a specific load balancer for Concourse, uh, and then do a Bosch deploy. Uh, and you'll just have like a Concourse up and running um, for you to use to either make like one of our pipelines that we're, we're showing you today to deploy Cloud Foundry or whatever. So you might be wondering, who's currently using all these new tools. Um, so 
right now, even though these tools are also geared towards new users who might not understand a lot of setting up Cloud Foundry, a lot of core open source teams are also using these tools. So here we have a pipeline for my current team um, where we have a task for bubbling up an environment called Slouch, named after a hat. Um, and then we have a Slouch deploy, which will deploy a Cloud Foundry environment. Um, in this case, we use this environment for just manual spiking, but for a lot of other teams, there will be further steps after of running tests on, um, on that Cloud Foundry installation. And then lastly, you'll delete the Cloud Foundry, which obviously saves money because you're getting rid of VMs that aren't currently in use. Uh, cool. So now I want to touch a bit on uh, future plans for uh, some of these tools. So first is bubble jump boxes. Um, so the idea here is that instead of deploying your Bosch to a public subnet uh, accessible from, to the internet, uh, we would deploy a jump box in front of your Bosch. So the, the jump box is accessible from the internet. And then um, the Bosch director is actually on the internal subnet, uh, just to give you that extra layer, layer of security. Cool. Um, another feature where we're working on adding is Bubble Cred Hub. So Cred Hub is um, a tool that uh, another team's working on that will store your credentials for you in a centralized place. So the idea here is that uh, we would deploy a Cred Hub onto your Bosch director, and all your credentials would be stored in there. So when you do a Bosch deploy, you no longer have to specify a var store. Uh, all those variables will just be stored inside of Cred Hub. Uh, and then you could uh, use the like cred up CLI to rotate them or retrieve them or whatever you need. Um, and then we're also working on adding Azure support to Bubble, um, just to give you you know more choices for whatever IaaS you want to deploy on. Um, and the release integration team is working on uh, a migration path for CF release to CF deployment uh, for those uh, users who uh, need that. Um, and so if you're interested in diving deeper into anything that we talked about today, here are some links that might be of use. Um, the GitHub repositories for all the tools, Slack, and where you can reach the teams. And also if you're interested in the concourse pipelines and the tasks we have there of bubbling up and deploying CF, there's also a repository that houses all of those for use. Um, and with that, we're open to any questions. Thanks again, guys. Yep. Um, you said that now it takes about a couple of hours to deploy uh, from scratch. Where, where, where are those couple of hours coming from? Like, where is that time going? Uh, mostly doing Question. the Bosch deploy uh, for Cloud Foundry. Um, so doing uh, like the bubble up and creating all that infrastructure. On GCP, it takes like 10, 15 minutes. On Azure or AWS, it takes like 20. Um, but then doing the actual Bosch deploy um, could take some time because it has to like compile all the releases um, and create all those VMs and everything. Right, yeah. Um, oh, and just to repeat the question, he was uh, asking if, if there were manual steps that are required within those two hours or is just waiting for things to compile or, or whatever. Um, yeah, most of the time is just waiting for things to compile. Um, if you're thinking of like the actual commands to run, there's probably like four or five, um, and they're usually pretty simple. Um, it'd basically be boiled down to like the bubble up, bubble create LBs, Bosch deploy Cloud Foundry. Uh, and so it's actually three. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, Go ahead, Gabe. So you mentioned some advantages of using bubble over the whole approach. Um, sounds like you're also talking about like, the bar store. Is, is it the case that the credentials of the bar store, like, does the user have to enter, enter those credentials? Um, so the question was, um, I guess the main question out of that was about the VAR store, if I'm yeah, not I mistaken. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to figure out, like, is the VAR store an improvement over a field thing because of security conditions? 
right, so the question was, is the VARS store an improvement um, because of not only usability, but also security? Um, and so I guess to answer that question, it depends, I suppose, on what the team was doing prior. Um, because prior to having this VARS store with um, the new way of doing things in CF deployment, um, there are a number of ways that users um, of Cloud Foundry might have stored their credentials. Um, so you could have stored them in several different repositories, making it difficult to follow like what was actually like a current credential and what might be like um, some like bit rot or something like that. Um, and also, it I guess it can improve security, um, but you have to of course store the one file in a secure repository or location. The credentials are being generated automatically now. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is true. Um, the point was that before users could create their own credentials and now it's being generated for them. Um, and that could also be an added bonus for security um, because before in the past users could just make admin admin for all of their like username, like passwords, which isn't very secure. But now since Bosch generates them for you, they can definitely be, um, or they're not admin admin and they're randomized. Um, so. That is an improvement on security. Uh, okay. Yep. How many, how many VMs are created in this deployment out of the box? Uh, so the question is, how many VMs are created in this deployment out of the box? Um, I believe, so you get one VM for your Bosch director, and then you get around 30 VMs for your Cloud Foundry installation, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I, I think that's usually to make it HA. So a lot of the components are, you know, deployed with two VMs. Um, just, you know, if one data center goes down, then you don't lose your Cloud Foundry. So it's in one AZ? Uh, bu Bubble will actually create you infrastructure that is striped across AZs. Uh, and when you do a Bosch deploy, it will actually deploy your Cloud Foundry across uh, those AZs. Uh, who knows? <laughs> uh, Evan, you had a question? Yeah, I was, I was just going to add, that's, that's like one thing I would note when talking about CF deployment is that it's like, it's, it provides opinions that are production ready is like one of the main advantages of it. And one of those is like high, high availability and uh, that it's striped across AZs. Yeah, and I, I guess another um, idea we have uh, that we might be working on um, is a bubble light. So the idea here is that um, if you ever use Bosch light, uh, you'll know that instead of creating VMs, it creates containers inside of a VM. Um, so the idea here is that uh, it could create um, a Bosch director that actually uses uh, containers instead of VMs. Uh, so you, you really only have the one VM on your IaaS. Um, so the question is, if I'm somebody who's looking at Cloud Foundry as an option, uh, but comparing it to other competitors, is this, are these tools tools that I would want to use to deploy Cloud Foundry and test it out? Um, and so I think from our perspective, it definitely is a way for developers who are trying to compare different tools to easily get off the ground with like very limited like overhead of like getting approval for things to test out a Cloud Foundry installation. Um, so this is all open source. Um, so for a developer who really just wants to compare the options on their own, this is a really great way to test out Cloud Foundry. And if they like it, then they can always move to like something like PCF with more support. Um, and I'm still waiting for another hour for a I don't know if that's true, but I imagine it is. So I was 
yes, I don't know, it's probably not even appropriate for this talk, but I was going to say, maybe that could be one of the next steps in using that time, or maybe the light could help, the, the, the bubble light could help with that. Too. Yeah, uh, so um, I, th I think another thing that we are going to be working on, or at least the uh, release integration team is working on, is um, compiling the releases beforehand. Uh, so a lot of the time is spent on uh, compiling releases, um, which if you compile it beforehand, that just cuts out that time um, dramatically. Cool, any more questions? Did you have a question? Just to add, um, CF deployment has an ops file built into it that you can apply that scales everything down to one node. So if you're just trying it out and you don't want to be HA, then you can use that and that will reduce the number of VMs quite drastically, probably halve it, and also make it faster to stand up at that point. All right, thank you.